Professor Alexander Gabovich is going to speak about tunnel current injunctions involving disordered D-wave superconductors with charge density waves. I also want uh, to express my gratitude to the organizer for inviting me to make a presentation. And uh, it's nice to see this beautiful city, uh, which is a really Europe uh, European city, and I uh, hope it will be more European uh, in some in, uh, several more years. So what, uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, you see that uh, superconductivity is a well-known phenomenon uh, which is very important for technical uh, applications and very interesting from the fundamental point of view. And uh, in uh, the best uh, superconductors known so far from um, estimated as uh, concerning the critical parameters, they are operates, and in all similar such superconductors, there are some uh, processes, some other instabilities of the electron spectrum, which uh, compete with superconductivity. Uh, so uh, we are uh, we are dealing with such superconductors, our group, which is uh, an international one, and uh, make uh, theoretical, mostly theoretical studies, but also experimental ones. But the, the main uh, thing which uh, I want you to uh, know is that uh, in most of such, uh, there are a lot of uh, these cuprates or these oxides, uh, very complex oxides. Uh, the gap, uh, the gap appears at, um, uh, at some uh, points of the brilliant zone, and uh, this uh, the gap uh, which uh, is connected to the nesting properties of the Fermi surface. And this gap is uh, a dielectric one. And in uh, the real space, it, it is reflected as uh, some shifts of atoms, uh, which uh, were first discovered by Piles in uh, 1930. And uh, these, uh, it's called uh, Piles transition. And uh, all such uh, phenomena are called charge density waves. So we have a gapping of the electron spectrum in, uh, by two reasons. And all this interfere, and we should look at it uh, uh, on the equal footing uh, of both kinds uh, of phenomena. Uh, and uh, to interpret the tunnel conductances, which is one of the main uh, tools, experimental tools, to uh, find uh, the properties of the electron spectrum. So uh, this is good if we have this, uh, the order state. But it is always a disorder. Why? Because all those uh, compounds, they are, you see, this delta. It means they are non-stichiometric, and that is why it's, it's disordered. It, there are some patches uh, which are different from other patches, and this makes the whole picture even more involved. So uh, we have, this is uh, the phase uh, diagram, uh, this uh, whole concentration of content of uh, oxygen and the temperature and uh, this uh, pseudogap, it, uh, it means uh, the appearance of the uh, charge density wave instability. So what uh, now uh, we have a lot of experience. 
experimental data, and they are made they, in two setups. Either we have uh, tunneling, they are layered compounds, either we have tunneling across the layers, or we have the tunneling inside the layers, between uh, the electrodes made of such materials. So, uh, in this uh, talk, we are to uh, I shall mention only the case when we have some measures, so it means that we have a intrinsic tunnel between the layers. So, okay, this is a picture which shows that it's a really, it's a patchy, uh, patchy structure, it's experimental data, and uh, the, um, the distribution of gaps is uh, is non-uniform and uh, that is uh, taken into account in our calculations. So uh, there are also uh, two kinds of uh, these charge density waves. They are either uh, the checkerboard uh, which reflects the original symmetry or the symmetry is lost and uh, we have uh, a pneumatic phase when the charge density waves are unidirectional. So both cases were analyzed. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, this uh, non homogeneous distributions are shown for many uh, such uh, uh, materials. So what we have, uh, we have these, uh, this is the gap rows, uh, which is, uh, this is the superconducting one, which is P-wave, and here is plus and minus the um, uh, size of the uh, superconducting or the perimeter, and here are four sectors, uh, four or two sectors of charge density waves, two sectors when it is uh, unidirectional, and four sectors when we have the checker. There is a complicated, quite complicated theory which I not, uh, do not want to talk about. And so these gap roses, we should uh, solve those uh, equations and uh, obtain uh, the self-consistent solution, uh, solutions and obtain the results for quasi-particle conductance. I'll uh, skip all these. They're very interesting. Uh, this interference, two order parameters, they have their own uh, own dependence on the, on the temperature. But when they compete, uh, they distort uh, the, uh, the actual um, dependence of, of their competitor. And that is why they, they, you should make it so consistently and it's, it's very important. So, uh, the results are as follows. We have, this is, uh, if we have without charge density waves, we have uh, such a behavior with temperature. Uh, of, uh, so, it's symmetric and uh, quite interesting because B wave, it's not S wave, it's not isotropic, and uh, it is well known what should, uh, from the theory, what should be observed. What should we observe if we have this uh, charge density wave? It totally distorts this, uh, the nice picture which was on the previous slide, and we have the coexistence of this one, and it is quite non-symmetric, which is actually the case in this observed, really the loss of symmetry uh, in non-symmetric junctions, and uh, by the way, in super uh, for superconductors, uh, although we have non-symmetric junction, we have symmetric uh, current voltage characteristics. Here it becomes non-symmetric and it is very involved and it's, uh, uh, it changes this temperature. First, superconductivity disappears, and then uh, this charge has the way it disappears. So we calculated all this and you see what uh, uh, this uh, red one means uh, su superconductivity, and uh, uh, blue ones, magenta ones, it means that you uh, have superconductivity with charge density. So it is distorted, and it, uh, really, in, in experiments, we have such uh, the signs of such a behavior. 
This is the case when uh, it was not disordered. Uh, uh, it was not disordered in your case. But what shall we see? And here is also the calculations when uh, we have uh, we, we, we uh, charge the ACT wave. Uh, this is uh, this tangent, and without its red. So when we have uh, this disorder, we uh, we calculate it with several uh, properties of disorder uh, when uh, the uh, parameter responsible for the uh, charge density waves, uh, so it means the strength of the uh, charge density wave pairs, when it changes, and so when it is, um, it, it, it have a, a wide distribution. So when we take into account this distribution, instead of this, uh, Behavior. We have a very, uh, some smeared behavior, which is really uh, observed in the experiment, uh, by the way, with our, uh, our colleague who was mentioned at the beginning. Uh, he uh, makes uh, such experiments, and, uh, but they will not present it now. So this theory is re really reflects the um, situation in uh, the kind of, uh, measurements of conductance, uh, tunnel conductance spectrum of superconductors with sharp density waves and uh, our theory uh, well uh, describes uh, the experiment quite well. Here are uh, also other, other cases uh, where you, you see the development of temperature, uh, no, no, here it's not the temperature but with for a different uh, for different kinds of uh, distrib uh, gap distributions. So you, you see that we can observe different kinds of, of the spectrum. So uh, here are the conclusions which uh, summarize uh, the results obtained in our theory. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor. Very nice presentation. Questions, comments? We have time. Is there any evidence that the pending change of delta is okay? Even one of number atoms does not change their balance. It is well known that copper sometimes The, it, it, it is known that here in these um, in these materials, copper really it has uh, uh, it changed its valency, and it depends on the, uh, on the content of the um, uh, additional content of uh, of oxygen. It, it is well known. The problem is how this microscopic uh, event is reflected in spectrum. So what we, the, our theory is phenomenological. What we take here, we take here uh, what is the, the result that we have these two instabilities, two kinds of instabilities, which are governed by chemistry. Of course, it's governed by chemistry of this uh, this this Bertolite uh, compound and its uh, the content of oxygen content changes, and if this is taken into account by us phenomenologically as, a as some two parameters as strengths of this instability. It really, in an experiment, it depends on the doping, on the uh, oxygen. It depends on the doping and the, the, uh, what we obtain. We uh, try to mimic this behavior uh, depending on the doping. Of course, you are quite right. I have a curiosity. In your uh, uh, calculations, there was a parameter capital N. You use two or four? Two or four, it means if the four, there are four sectors. It means that you have two, uh, two uh, charge density waves in this uh, y direction and in x direction. In experiments, we have such a situation. 
But there are also a situation where you have only in one direction. Then we have two. And two, it means two sectors. Only two sectors remain. And it's a transition into the market state when we lose symmetry. The problem of why the symmetry is lost is one of the interesting problems we are not dealing with. We take it for granted. We have two or four, but there are many people that study why it is the case. And it's very interesting. It's not concerns our report, but it's very interesting per se. Thank you. Thank you for pointing this out. We thank you again.